Hey, what's up, everybody? One Peg here. Uh, quick, just, I guess, patch and review for the limited amount of time that I've been able to play it. For those of you that haven't seen, unfortunately, the servers are kind of on fire. No one's really able to get into the game at all. Uh, we sat here for several hours trying to get in, and this, unfortunately, is the screen that I and many, many, many others are getting. So, what I would say is, if you are somebody that's actually able to get into the game, uh, try to stay in the game as best that you can. Uh, as best as you can, I would recommend that you do not log out you will probably end up getting stuck. Uh, but for the limited amount of time that I got to play, I was able to log in and uh, I did get some testing done that I want to show you guys uh, and, and give you the impressions that I've got so far. TLDR, this patch, in my opinion, has been the best content patch for uh, mechanics and whatnot that we have ever seen come from BSG. There is so much here that they got right. I am actually genuinely surprised that they were able to do as much as they did with this single patch. No joke. Uh, okay, so moving first into the recoil system. So we know that they've revamped recoil, and the problem with recoil was always that there was this flip-up mechanic. The The idea being that um, if you were going to fire your gun, my inhaler being my gun, right? If you were going to fire a pistol and you had your pistol, when you fired the pistol, it would flip back because the hinge is on your wrist when you fire, right? The pistol always flips up and backward, and that's the thing that you're trying to combat, right? But when you have a rifle that's shouldered, when you're holding a rifle that's shouldered on, on your shoulder, you're aiming down sights, that flip isn't on your wrist anymore. The, the point of, of impact and that hinging is on your shoulder. And since your shoulder isn't actually a hinge, yes, there could be a little bit of barrel rise, but the majority of that recoil goes back into your shoulder and is driven backward, and there is a little bit of, say, lateral movement when you're doing full auto. It doesn't have that flip. And uh, in, in the animations that we had from Tarkov up until this point, that's what would happen, is you would have the pistol grip hand where you were holding your rifle, even though it was shouldered, that pistol grip hand and the barrel rise would come up hinging on your wrist. And that was obviously something that didn't make a lot of sense. They have remedied this, and the recoil is now oh amazing. It is so nice and so controllable, even on the base weapon systems. I can only imagine how much uh, how much better it will feel on a fully kitted gun. Uh, the recoil systems on stock M4s that you can see in the video here. I used a PP19 for the majority of the day. There's an MP5 that you'll see here. And then obviously the MDR that came with the USEC starter kit. But I ended up running a PP19 and several AKs over the course of the day. Uh, they were very controllable. The recoil feels absolutely amazing. BSG absolutely knocked it out of the park. I know that I'm sounding like a fangirl here, but they really did. If I were you and you find the ability to get into EFT, just go into an offline raid and fire the rifles, they feel really, really, really good. Can't say enough good things about it. Uh, second, we have the painkiller effect that was modified in a patch note. Uh, it was that the, the whole game kind of went like grayscale when you took that and it came, became like over sharp. And then they made it so that the game kind of turned black and white, which was weird. And then they made it so that the, the edges blur, which is what you see now in Arena. That has been modified, so now there's more of like this colorized tunnel vision effect where like the center third or so of the screen in a circle, like in the center of your vision is still colorized, but the outside edges start turning like this more like grayscale tone where the color starts getting washed out. Uh, I actually don't mind this. I thought it was a was a fine change. It's a, it's an interesting like visual difference, but this to me feels okay. And then we have vaulting. So the vaulting system, the way that this works, and I'm kind of demonstrating it in the video, is you hold the space bar down as you walk up to um, a surface. And it doesn't matter if you're immersed in water or if you're in a deep bush or whatever, if you're trying to like mantle up to higher and higher ledges, it actually works really, really well. I noticed that there were a couple of instances where I wasn't able to mantle up onto a higher uh, position if it was above, say, about like my like the lower end of my, my character's like rib cage, let's say. But anything around like belly button height and lower, like hips level and, and lower, I was able to mantle up onto without any trouble at all. Um, it works a lot better if you walk up to it versus sprint up to it if it's something that you're trying to stand on top of as opposed to jump over. Because when you sprint up to it, it tended to like skid to a halt and then do the mantling. So there was all this extra time and energy that took to, to get up to doing it. Um, and it's a lot louder. When you jump over a, a wall at full sprint, you can hear like a very loud like scuffing noise. When you do it at walk speed, it's a lot more silent. 
So that's the that's the sprinting, or there's quiet one. Right, like way, way quieter. So this is obviously going to be like one of those sound cue, sound trigger types of things that people will definitely be listening for. So I would obviously be mindful of that when it comes to Tarkov. Sound is kind of everything. Uh, but the mantling system works very well, and it's a very, very smooth. Again, I think this was a huge W for BSG. They did a great job with it. Um, <clears throat> traversing like higher positions with all of this awkward like jumping mechanic kind of stuff is no longer really an issue anymore. You don't have to worry about all this extra parkour stuff. You have the ability to just kind of like get up to where you're trying to get to. I would like to see them add something in the future where you could like kind of jump and catch yourself if it's at like waist height or lower so that you could like mantle up onto like rooftops and whatnot from lower positions. But you know, maybe we'll get that in time once they introduce like ladder climbing and that actually ends up working. And then we have the plate rig system. So the way that this works is you go in and inspect the uh, the plate rig. So in this case, I had an AVS and a Highcom Trooper from the USEC starting gear. Uh, the Highcom Trooper is significantly less in weight because it's a poly blend uh, plate versus the AVS rig, which is, a, an, I think it's Aramid or something like that, where the uh, the plates in that are uh, a little bit more durable in their build, but they're still the same class of armor. So when uh, looking at these, though, the AVS, because of the plates, are significantly heavier than what's in the Highcom Trooper, which means that because they're the same form factor, you could actually take those chest and back plates out of the Trooper and put them into the AVS, get the same rough level of protection and durability, slightly less durability, but it will be the same level of protection, and it weighs like 8 kilograms less than what the Trooper does for a larger coverage area which is huge for people that want to like look at min maxing and gain like a little bit more storage area and whatnot. You have the ability to now mix and match these plates. So this adds a lot of customizability, a whole new layer of customizability when it comes to mobility, when it comes to weight, when it comes to turn radius and turn speed, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, people look at those stats and try to figure out ways to be able to min max their builds. And this is just another one of those ways. Now, granted, this adds an awful lot of complexity to Tarkov that no one's really tested to see whether or not this stuff actually works yet and we're definitely going to be going into the lab to look at all of this stuff uh in offline mode and test all this because i think it's incredibly important to make sure that all of this stuff works the way that it's intended to work but for the time being on paper this is another massive dub where we're looking at the ability to swap these plates around and you could turn a highcom trooper into a level six if you had the plates for it Right? You can pull the plates out of a hex grid, let's say, or out of a slick, and put a steel plate in a, in a high comm trooper. Now, I don't know if, why you'd want to, but you could, and it works. Uh, we did find that like the, um, the press armor has a slightly different form factor, slightly different shape for the front chest plate, um, which we'll have to continue to play with with other rigs, other chest armors, to see how they all kind of like interact and work. But for the time being, um, just knowing that these plates are interchangeable depending on which system that you're running with is kind of huge, kind of huge. And then finally, we have the shoulder swap mechanic. So um, I ended up rebinding this to a mouse button. They said it was mouse four by default, but the Logitech software doesn't really denote like a bona fide like mouse four. Uh, for me, I just ended up remapping like one of the side tap buttons on my scroll wheel. So I just tapped the scroll wheel to the left to do like left arm swapping. It seemed like it was pretty intuitive for me, at least by binding it that way. And I just bound it to an unused key, like period. Um, where, you know, that doesn't really end up being something that's bound that I use because um, all of my other keybinds are on my left hand for ease of use and like, you know, tactical advantage, whatnot. Um, so in doing so, uh, it swaps to the left shoulder. You can see an obvious difference in, in viewpoint from when you do that. Um, and they said that there was some more barrel sway, but it's really not that noticeable. So either it's bugged so that there's no real barrel sway that I can denote whatsoever, um, or it's so minuscule that it really isn't something that you have to worry about. Um, and that was intended. I don't know which one that is. But we ended up testing it, shooting at pillars and whatnot. And the recoil felt just as good on my left shoulder as it did on my right. I found myself like uh, moving between cover and trying to do peaks when we're doing left-sided peaks. I was absolutely swapping shoulders every time that we ended up doing these left-sided leans. Uh, it very, very, uh, very well done. It is, it is very nice. Uh, like it a lot, actually. Um, overall, from the mechanics side of things, for the stuff that they added, it's really, really good. I mean surprisingly good now if only they could make the servers work uh we would actually have something that was really fun and playable and and whatnot um i will warn you guys though once you're actually able to get onto that quote-unquote newbie map obviously all of the guys that have been playing this game for a long time are going to be on that map at first because all of the missions that you get at the beginning of the game are now all on that newbie map 
There is a map, a rudimentary one with all of the extracts locations uh, listed already on the Tarkov wiki. So just type in Ground Zero Tarkov or Tarkov wiki into Google. It will be the first result that comes up. Just scroll down and the map is right there. Not a big deal. Uh, if you want, I can go through and show you all of the extracts in another video, but I figure we should separate these out so that way you guys all have an idea of what you need to do. But the first four missions that you get at level one are all for this location, and they all lead into the ones that we're used to seeing, like debut, for instance, where you got to hand in 133 shotguns and then go to customs and, you know, all those other things, the Salewa kits. There are requirements to go onto the newbie map and do all of those first. My big question is if you have somebody that decides to go to level 20 before they bother stepping foot onto ground zero to do any of those quests, do the next quests in line come up and allow you to do them or are you just locked out from being able to do quests whatsoever? Um, that's going to have to be something that BSG will have to have an answer for because someone will likely test it uh, if not and if not it ends up being me at some point in the next couple of weeks. But for the time being I am very much enjoying this when I'm actually able to play. The servers right now are absolutely on fire. I'm going to go take a nap because I got three hours of sleep. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys my impressions of this and show you uh, some of the mechanics and how they work for those of you that haven't been able to get into the game yet and test it out for yourselves. Obviously, when you get in, I would highly recommend testing them out. Very, very cool. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming and checking it out. I very much appreciate you. Thank you for watching my stuff. Thank you for lending me your eyeballs. Come check me out at twitch.tv slash one peg. I will be live as soon as I end up getting some sleep and hop back on. It'll probably be in the wee hours of the morning Eastern Standard Time, something like that overnight. Um, but in the meantime, if you wouldn't mind subbing the channel here or uh, say hi to me on Twitter or something, that would be pretty sweet. Thank you guys so much again. Love you all. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.